Hello and welcome. As you've seen on many other videos on my YouTube channel, we love to go on trips in our family. And this truck behind me is our Ford F-250 that we've used for many trips in the past, hauling our RV into many beautiful locations. In some of those locations, there is bodies of water and we'd love to be able to take kayaks with us or potentially other things. So when Vivor reached out to me and offered to send me their uh, roof truck rails to evaluate and test, I jumped on that opportunity. So today's video, we're going to do an unboxing and I'm going to install those roof rails on our truck and see how well that goes. And I'm pulled here into my garage just to be out of the weather and out of the heat and sun outside. The box is this big and it has a bunch of smaller boxes inside of it. So I'm gonna unbox this now and show you what it looks like inside. I have separated all the smaller sub boxes that were inside of that bigger box. So this one has the manual and some uh, rails. This one has some more rails in it, which we'll figure out in a minute. This is a bunch of connecting hardware. It comes with this wrench. And then over here, we have the, looks like the cross rails. But you can see here also that it's the Vivor pickup truck rack. It's adjustable and the height range is 430 to 750 millimeters. And it can hold up to 800 pounds. It has this nice finish on it. I don't know totally what that finish is, but it definitely feels like it's meant to be out in the weather because it will be. They have the parts separated by lots of foam. I haven't seen any parts that were rubbing on each other, so that's good. And over here on these long rails, they're just separated here on the ends from uh, each other from with these uh, foam caps. I've taken everything out of the protective wrapping, so we'll just go over these parts that it comes with briefly. We have these four components that uh, are the risers, I believe, and these are the other half of those components, and they slip together. And then we have these two. I'm not 100% sure how that works. And frankly, I haven't read the instructions yet. So I'm just showing you all the parts that it comes with. It comes with eight of these clamps, four of these end caps. And then it has a couple of different components along here and nuts and bolts to connect everything together. Some brackets here. It did come with a crescent wrench and this Allen wrench here. So if you don't have your own tools, it comes with what it needs. And then last but not least, it has these, which are the main cross rails across the top. So I'm going to start assembling this on the truck. Are you excited, Lydia? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. This is the user manual showing the finished product. And so it has the two halves of the risers on right here, this part and this part. And then we have the cross rails here, of which there's two of them that come together and then two total. So that's why there's four of these over here. And then these are all the connecting parts. So while Lydia is tightening this bolt, I wanted to point out a couple of things. So there's a plate here that is non-threaded, and then also on the crossbar, you'll see right here that there is a wider cutout, and this is where the, the head of the, the bolt goes. And if we go on to the back side, you'll see there isn't a cutout on the edges here, so that's where the bottom of the bolt goes, and this plate is threaded. So just be aware that it took me a while to figure that out that wasn't completely clear. And you can see over here that there's a bunch of different plates. And the key differentiator is basically that these six are not threaded. And then these are. And then down here, these are as well. And then there's even some more down here that are even longer that we'll get to using in just a minute. And then in this case, we are not using the washers. It doesn't look like. And then there's a bunch of smaller uh, bolts. And then we have some longer bolts as well. So I'm going to keep assembling this and just pointing out little gotchas that I find along the way. Done. All right, thanks. I have found a part I'm going to have to drill out. As you can see right here, this bolt is just not aligning with the threads of this plate. And there's, it's just, it's very close, but it's off by a couple of millimeters. And I have been trying, I've tried several different plates over here, and I've looked at them all to see if there's any variances. And it's close enough that I'm just confident that it's this cross rail here. The holes on the inside are just not quite straight enough. So I'm going to drill that out so that I can get that bolt through it. And these rails can't come any closer together and I just cannot get it quite into the threads. I was finally able to get both bolts through their respective holes and I will take this back apart and show you how much I drilled out. This right here is what one of the normal holes looked like and this is how much I had to drill out on the other one in order to get to fit. You can see that it's more elongated than anything to give myself extra space, but it worked. And because this is aluminum, it's not gonna cause a rusting problem or anything. And so you may have to have a drill on hand if the holes don't align. I have finished assembling the side riser here and you can see that this part slips in and out of the other. The little pro tip I would give on this 
is you can see that it's using two plates on the inside. See those on either side right there? And then on the outside it has the, the nuts, or the bolts. You can see it's using one of these washers, one of these short nuts, and then it's using one of these plates here that are the threaded plates. Uh, my pro tip is to definitely not slip these together first uh, because then it won't work. You have to put the plates in here and then you put the nuts on the outside, but leave them loose. They need to be loose and then this will be able to slip in there just fine. And then you can tighten them and you tighten them to the height that you would like. Here's an update on the project. The cross rails are not bolted down yet. Uh, but the side rails, the risers, are bolted down. And I kind of wanted to show a little bit more detail about how I did this. My uh, truck has this uh, bed cover, which it's folded up right now. And so the bed cover cannot be used at the same time as these roof rails, but at least they can be both installed at the same time. You just have to roll up the, the roof cover out of the way and just leave it rolled up while the, the rails are here. And the reason is, is because those rails, uh, the, the roof cover would come down and set right here where these clamps are. So uh, this right here is a clamp relating to this roof rail and so I had to move this out of the way. It was further this way and I wanted these to be closer to the back of the truck so that uh, it has as much lateral support as possible for the things that are on the on the rail. So this is bolted down here and then over here on this side this is where the trifold cover is and you can see the C-clamps there. And here is another bracket that's part of that cover. And I had to move it a little bit. And then this is a little piece of it. And then also this right here is a bar or, or rod that connects to this point right here to keep it folded up if you're driving when you're not using it. And if I pull this off the clamp here, you'll see that it conflicts with the, the, the rack. So I can't have that employed but it's okay because this trifold thing is not going anywhere. It's going to be resting on the rack potentially anyway. And then coming around over here to this back corner, basically the same story. Had to move this right here a little bit to make room for these clamps. I'm now working on assembling the cross rails here. And I wanted to point out a little trick here I found. I was trying to screw the screws in here while this was over like this. And I found it was actually much easier to just put it right here, this plate, I screw it on and then this slides over that plate and then once I tighten that down this will be locked on. So just a little tip there on how to do that. I've finished assembling everything. I just haven't tightened all of the bolts right here both for the rise of the rack and the latitude of it as well. I'm going to drive the truck out of the garage and then I'll be able to do it outside of the garage and not have to um, either break these off trying to drive out or lower them again to get out of the garage. I wanted to point out one little takeaway here. On the end, it's got this uh, cargo holder and it uses the, the smaller plate on the bottom with just one threaded hole. And it's it said to put a washer right here. And I did that and it kind of made it bind up a little bit on the sliding here. I really don't see the point of it. So I just took the washer out. And then also uh, it has these end caps and obviously don't put the end caps on until you've slid this on and then put the end cap in just like this and this rail on the other side it was a little bit narrow hard to put on the end cap so i put a crescent wrench in there and just wind it out a little bit so i could get that on better and then it has a nice uh, loop here on the end so you could use that for putting ratchet straps or bungee cords or whatever through the end of it and then, of course, this here on the end. If you were to put lumber across here, for instance, this gives it a nice end stop. And this is adjustable, slides all the way to the center. And then it has this nice uh, uh, knob here to tighten down to hold it into place. And then this also has some holes in it for um, bungee cords and the like. You could put a, something through the whole center area. So it's a nice uh, attachment point. So I'm gonna drive this truck out and we'll get this leveled outside. I wanted to point out how tall this is. The rack is at this lowest point and my garage door opening is 81 and a half inches tall. And if I come right here, you'll see that there is tolerance here of just like two inches. So obviously uh, if you're gonna be pulling this in your garage, be careful, have this all the way down and potentially just take these off which you could relatively easily do, just pop this off, unscrew this plastic head screw, and this thing will slide off the end. And then that will give you an additional several inches of height there. 
I am almost done with the installation. I haven't tightened up all of the bolts, but I have sized the, uh, the distance right here to six inches. And I've done that on all four. And then horizontally, I have uh, tightened it so it's right on the edge of that cargo holder there. So everything should be symmetrical. And I've put these two two by fours down the length of it. And you can see that that two by four comes right across the roof of the truck. Now, obviously I may need to adjust these in the future, depending on what we're carrying. Uh, for instance, we might put a canoe on here at some point and the canoe may need more room depending on how it curves, etc. And that's the advantage of the adjustability of these. It doesn't have to be set in stone right now. But that right there would be about where I might have it or just, I might have these a little higher, but uh, depending on what I put on here, if it's like a canoe, I might want to actually use the front part of the cab of the truck as some of the support for the canoe and put like a pool noodle there or something like that. So that's why I wanted to be about the same level as the roof. And so far, this is looking really good. Now, clearly one of the disadvantages to using this is, is that we cannot put our cover down and roll it across the roof of the, of the top of this bed of the truck. When we go on trips, this bed of the truck is usually filled with tubs of stuff for our trip, right? So I'm not totally sure how this is going to look. We might just still be able to use it on some trips, but we'll have to be more careful about what we put back here and make sure everything is in a Rubbermaid tote so it's protected from blowing out of the truck or um, getting wet and dirty and that sort of thing. I do not intend to keep this on the truck just at all times partially because I do want to be able to continue to use this cover. And also these C-clamps are not hard to take on and off, especially if you just use a power drill. And so I'm gonna be getting this sized appropriately and then I'll take it back off and it'll be sized and ready to go whenever we need it. Here's a bonus pro tip. If you don't plan to keep it on your truck on a regular basis like I don't, then I put two bike hooks here, 59 inches apart, just above the garage door. And they are about four inches down from the ceiling. And you can see it's perfect, uh, fits perfectly. There's just a couple inches, like two, maybe three inches of uh, clearance there on the bottom. Uh, of the rack versus the top of the garage door and it curves so it doesn't hit. I've opened the garage door fully and verified that. And this is just a great place to store them up out of the way. And the bike hooks are through the black cargo holders, the triangular pieces there up there on the corners. So these won't fall off. They're very much hooked on there, but they're also easily accessible. I can just put a ladder here when the garage door is closed and then bring them down and then go bolt them onto the truck when we need to use them. This is the Allen wrench and the wrench that it came with and you could definitely assemble it with these except that I had to drill out those holes bigger. So I ended up using this drill right here and a big thick drill but the, the, the size of it doesn't matter so much as I just moved it uh, sideways so that it would create an elongated hole. And then uh, obviously something to cut open the boxes and then I used a couple of these Allen wrenches to move the brackets from that uh, trifold roof uh, uh, cover, bed cover that I had on it already. So those are all the parts that I had and it was not too bad. Overall it took me three and a half hours to install but keep in mind I was busy also filming for this YouTube video so okay, take that into consideration. If you were in a hurry you could probably do it in closer to two hours or something like that. I ended up with these parts left over. I have four of these threaded plates, three, uh, four unthreaded plates and then eight bolts and some washers. If you look right here at this diagram there's a, a part right here that goes between these two that brings these two bars together. And I have it in its narrowest setting, so it only needed one plate. But if I were to separate these at all, then they'd have to be attached at the two different sides. And that's what these are for. So I'm going to keep these in a Ziploc bag in case I need to adjust it in the future and have the horizontal bars be wider. I have loaded our 17-foot canoe up on here just to give you an idea of what that looks like. I wanted to point out a couple of things. We have just regular ratchet straps here and the hooks are too big to go through these holes so those are probably just for bungee cords but they do go through the center here just fine. Another thing is I have this back one still at just six inches but the front one here I had to raise up probably double that so that the lift on it is enough to get the front of the kayak off the top of the truck. Another thing I wanted to point out is this right here. We've got this cover here, this trifold cover. So I put a rag here on both sides and then just bungee corded that so that it'll hold this in place and have it not be banging around and scratching everything.
So we're gonna head to a lake now and try this out and see how well it works. We headed up into the mountains, passing up the super crowded Tibble Fork Reservoir and continued up higher into the mountains where the road changes to a rough gravel road, which offers a better test of the truck rack's ability to stay clamped tightly to the truck despite the bumpy road. Before we ever got to the mountains, I quickly discovered I had not raised the front rack high enough and the tip of the canoe was tapping on the top of the truck. So as a quick fix, I put a piece of styrofoam between the truck and the canoe to stop the tapping until I had a better opportunity to make the proper adjustment. The gravel road switches back and forth up the steep mountainside as Tibble Fork Reservoir becomes a tiny emerald in the distance. Finally, after several miles of the gravel road, we arrived at Silver Lake Flat. We went to the eastern side where you get to cross the inlet stream, which is always fun. Then we were finally able to unload the canoe and get on the water. We are up to the reservoir and you can see the canoe is still up there. That's great. It's still totally locked on and solid. The side stops worked great and the ratchet straps held it down. Perfect. You can see we're in the beautiful setting up here at Silver Lake Flat and that's the reservoir down that way. One of the advantages of a truck rack is it elevates the load, which in our case is the canoe, up over the cab, so we still had plenty of cargo capacity of the truck bed. So we were able to bring our canopy, camping chairs, a kid's kayak, and various other odds and ends for the day. There was additional space we could have easily brought additional equipment. After setting up our home base and eating lunch, we then had a fun afternoon on the water. We have just finished up eating lunch here and we're gonna go out on the canoe now. And Lucy is already out on the kayak and she's way out there. And we're off. Girls, are you having fun? Yeah. So are you glad that we came today? Yeah. Yeah? Clara, are you on that kayak all by yourself? Yeah. Good job. We're now out on the canoe and we're just tooting around the reservoir, just exploring. Hey girls, are you having fun yet? Yeah. All right. Lucy and Lydia want to see if they can get into the canoe while no. it's in the water. Good job, Lucy. All right, Lydia, you ready? Can you go over where Lucy was? Scoot that way. Help Lucy. Can you help her, Lucy? Good job. Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> There you go, good job. What a beautiful oh, view. Right. You girls having fun? Yeah. All right. After a fun-filled afternoon on the water, we loaded the equipment back into the truck and I took the opportunity to raise the front roof rack rail so as to avoid the tapping of the canoe on the roof. The road is really rough, but we never heard the canoe tap the roof and there was no piece of foam this time. The ability to adjust the height of this truck roof rack is really important for versatility. Well, we are done on the reservoir and we had lots of fun, right kids? Yeah! Yeah, yeah lots of fun. We'd like to thank Beaver for sending this roof truck a truck rack to us and it's working great for our canoe and we'll continue to use it in the future. If in the future I find that there's any uh, problems that we have with it, I'll post a pinned comment below so you can get any updates on our usage of it there. And with that, uh, if you're interested in any, any other small adventures or big adventures that we go on, then go check out our YouTube channel. We have lots of videos of doing fun adventures in our RV and our Tesla. With that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.